Also, one of the most controversial topics nowadays is Ozempic Monjaro. Mm -hmm. I'm very middle of the road on this. I don't understand why the quote unquote health wellness community is so against these things. I also don't understand why they have to be looked at as the only route. For some people, they've really helped them lose weight. And yes, there can be some muscle loss and other lean, lean body loss, but that can be offset with resistance training. They've helped a lot of people. And other people are like, no, this stuff is terrible. I think the most interesting thing about Ozempic Monjaro is that they are GLP-1, they're in the GLP-1 pathway, glucagon-like peptide one. And it was discovered in Gila monsters, which is a, uh, a lizard basically. <laughs> and someone, the, now, the, now the entomologist will dive on me. It's a big, big lizard looking thing that doesn't eat very often. And they figured out that there's this peptide that allows it to curb its own appetite at the level of the brain and the gut. And it has a lot of homology to sequence homology to what we now call GLP-1. Mm -hmm. So I love anytime there's animal biology links to cool human biology links to a, a drug that's powerful that can help people with obesity and type two diabetes. And there's evidence that can even curb some addictions. Um, those are newer data, but I don't see as it either or. In fact, I've been a little bit disappointed at the way that the um, whatever you want to call it, health, wellness, biohacking community has like slammed on Ozempic Monjaro. It's like, they're like, just get out and run and do, listen, there are people who are carrying substantial amounts of weight that running could in injure them. They get on these drugs and they can improve. And then th hopefully they're also doing resistance training and eating better. And then, you know, you're bringing all the elements together. Well, why do you think the criticism is happening? Is it that Ozempic became super popular so people are misusing it or that kind of thing? No, I think what it is, is that people think if it's, a pharmaceutical, it's bad. Yeah. And then, or if it's a supplement, it's bad depending on which camp they're in. And and it, wouldn't it be wonderful to kind of like fill in the gap between this divide? You know, um, what I would like to see in politics and in health is um, neither right nor left, but what we can just call a league of reasonable people that looks at things on an issue by issue basis and fills in the center. Because I think most people are in the are, I don't want to say center in a political way, but I think most people are reasonable. They want to be reasonable, but that's not what sells clicks. That's not what, that's not what drives interest. Um, but I'm a very, like, like I look at issue by issue, person by person. I don't like in group out group stuff. I never have. I've got friends from all walks of life. I said this on other podcasts and it always sounds like a, like a political statement, but like I, the, the, the push towards like, you know, polarization is, it's so frustrating. If there's one thing that's discouraging to me as, as I get older each year, I'm like, wow, are we ever going to get out of this? Like polarization. 